The dog heads are 10 feet tall. They weigh 300 to 450 pounds-ish in that, in that area. One of them has a rotator unit, so it's heavier. And they're really heavy, they're hard to move. They're on a pretty big, you know, heavy duty, old kind of beat up trailer. And we've been taking them around for years to events and things. And they've been in the sun for 50 years. They're commercial signage, so they were made to be in the sun, but 50 years is a long time. They have metal frames inside and the metal frames are starting to rust through. They need to be completely replaced. That's a fairly big job. You gotta get in there and my old partner, Paul Troutman and his, his crew are gonna do that. They're going to pull out the, the metal guts and replace them, and it's a big job. Um, the fiberglass is wearing through in a bunch of places. They need to be refiberglassed all over in different spots here and there. Uh, new covers need to be made. The covers rotted off of the heads. They need to be made to keep them weatherproof. Uh, I would like to do uh, metal base plates uh, that we can then attach to the new uh, uh, trailer that we want to build. We want to customize the trailer so that they can, our hope is that we can, if we raise enough money, we're going to try to get all three of them rotating independently on the new trailer. If we can't, we don't raise enough to do that, we'll just get regular, you know, sitting on the trailer. But, um, the, you know, the trailer's got to be, we got to buy a new trailer and customize it for them. And we also need to repair this funky old vehicle. I mean, the trailer's extremely heavy with the dog heads on it, and you need a heavy-duty vehicle to haul them or you'll ruin the vehicle. You'll just gut it. This van is a heavy-duty van. It's a 460 Ford, and it's a strong engine but it's been beaten up pretty bad. It's been hauling them around for years. It needs major work uh, to uh, restore it to the point where it can haul them safely. Uh, and there's just a lot of, there's a lot that goes into it. The, the dog head that was restored by the city and is out at Ocean Beach, which we'll probably stop by later. Um, the city took, it took them six months to restore that. And it cost about, it cost over 50 grand for, to do one dog head. So, we're going to restore these dog heads, get a new trailer, and trick it out, and, re and, and repair the hauling van, all for less than what it took the city of San Francisco to do one dog head. Um, they did a museum quality job on that dog head. I mean, it's beautiful what they did to it. But we, you know, we, we're going to have, you know, our friends are going to help us do it for way, way, way below their commercial rates and uh, we're really gonna do a good job on them. They're gonna be beautiful, they're gonna be, good. They're gonna be good to drive around for the next 50 years, is my plan. And so I can hand them off to somebody else who's stupid enough to haul this thing around, because it takes some time and energy to do it. And, uh, and I want, you know, actually I'm looking for somebody in the long run who'll wanna kinda do that as a public service on in the future, younger person, guy or a gal, who likes local history and can drive a trailer, so. Have you been doing uh, for past thirty years with them? Well, for the well, I got the first one. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I got the first. I got, I got the first doggy diner uh, head in uh, the late '80s from a friend of mine who owned a sign company, American Neon Sign Company, and it immediately I put it on a little trailer and it immediately became the it immediately became the mascot for the San Francisco Cacophony Society and not too long after became the mascot for the annual St. Stupid's Day Parade that happens on April 1st every year in San Francisco. And then we just took them out for that and then we would take them out to friends' bands and to you know, uh, events that people were doing. And then wherever we took that one dog head, people would go, oh, Doggy Diner, oh my God, look at it. And it's like, we realized this is like, really, people really dig this. So it kind of became a thing to bring them out for events. And I would, from that point on, whenever I had the time, in between working, because I you know, had a day job, uh, I would take them to things, to events, either people I knew or events that I thought were cool and interesting uh, and wanted to support. And we just show up and park out front. And that was always kind of a, it became a, like an emblem of, oh, there's something happening here at this place for people who knew San Francisco history. And even for people who didn't, because they're so damn weird. Again, you know, people go, what's that? And they'd stop to check out what was going on. So. <laughs> you know, like, and then it became an obligation. <laughs> like, we ended up with three of them. Uh, it's a long story, but we ended up with three of them. And I've had people t ask me, well, when are you going to get the fourth? And I, d I don't want a fourth one. Okay. Three is plenty. Three, that's all I want. I want three. That's enough. They're heavy. They're hard to move around. I, 
you know, once we get the trail, the new trailer, and we get them tricked out, it'll be a little bit easier and safer. But in the meantime, no, I don't want. So if you have a dog head, keep it. <laughs> I don't want it. We got these three, and we take them around. They're the mobile unit dog heads. They're the holy order of the holy order of the uh, holy trinity of the dog Dominican order, uh, as they were bequeathed uh, by Bishop Joey some decades ago, and uh, we just bring them around. Bring them around to stuff that we can. A local San Francisco, Oakland, Bay Area uh, events that we support, um, and that are cool. So. So uh, what's interesting about the historical icon? Ness about, about, about the dog heads. I mean, not necessarily <clears throat> just the dog heads, but the idea of an, uh, of an icon like this. And the fact also that it's rolling instead of being just right. somewhere. Well, the interesting thing, the interesting thing about mobile dog heads like this, well, there's several things. One, if you are from the Bay Area, you recognize them, okay, and you remember them as a commercial icon, one that is you, for most people is a, 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 a pleasant memory because they would have gone to the doggy diner after the ball game with their dad or whatever, something like that. But they all, everybody has a, has a memory of going to the doggy diner at some point in their childhood if they grew up in the Bay Area. And uh, so that's one thing. Uh, if you don't know them, they're just so bizarre looking and whimsical in a way. And you also can't tell, if they, are they happy or are they sad? Are they looking at me? They're, they have this Vo Mona Lisa-like visage, you'll see when you look at them. Are they really smiling? Are they laughing at me? Are they laughing with me? Are they happy to see me? Are they going to eat me? You know, I mean, I don't know. And that really gets people curious, okay? So for the people who don't know what they are and don't have any connection with them already, you know, that's, they're like, what? what's that? So that's kind of cool. So when you bring them around, they're a, they're a disembodied commercial icon, which is a very interesting thing. And I don't know if there's actually a, a good descriptor in, uh, in America for such a thing. I'm sure that the French have figured it out, you know, as, some kind of, as a philosophical concept, you know, like what that means. But uh, I, don't, I don't know myself. I'll tell you later. Yeah, will you tell me later, thanks. Olivier? Okay, thanks. <laughs> but for, for Americans, it's just, uh, you know, seeing something that was originally had a commercial purpose and is disembodied from that and now has a less, uh, you know, uh, explainable purpose or maybe doesn't have a purpose, you know, who knows. That's an interesting thing, and there's a disconnect that happens. It's like, oh, they're not selling any. And when they find out, everybody's like, when are you going to open the restaurant again? I'm like, uh, that's the last business I want to go into. You know, forget it. I don't want to be in a restaurant business. We take these things around because they're fun, because people dig them, and it makes them smile. Okay, that's enough for me. Does it mean anything? You tell me.